I did not blow Michael's life apart. And I am sick of being blamed for that. You are the one that lied about being his father. Okay, if you want to point fingers at someone, then why don't you point one at yourself because you hurt Michael when you let Carly convince you to lie for her. This was over years ago. Why argue about it now? Because we never got it out in the open. You didn't want to talk about There's it. There's nothing to talk about. You did what you did. What I did wasn't wrong. You and Carly made the conscious choice to steal Michael from AJ. He deserved to know that he was his son. So you shattered Michael's world. Look, I know that's the way you've always seen I him. I loved that's Michael. What happened. You ripped him away. You gave him to a selfish, angry father who hated Carly and used Michael's a pawn every chance he got. A lot of people have dysfunctional fathers, and they turn out all right, Jason. was not dysfunctional. He faked his own death and stole Michael. That's crazy. It's evil. Right. AJ was reacting to years of lies and deception, to being forced out of his child's life. He was wrong. His actions are indefensible. But they were a result of a chain of events that you and Carly set into motion. Carly and I did what we thought was best for Michael. Carly manipulated you to get to you, Jason, and I Robin, tried to help you. Robin, you appointed yourself judge of what was right and wrong in everyone's life. If it weren't for me, Jason, you wouldn't have a life. Just to say that I gave you your life. I showed you how to value it after the accident. It's been years, but I will never forget that. You and I helped each other through some really tough times. And I will always care about you, Jason. That's why I came back, to give you the treatments. And when they didn't work, I went and found the surgeon who could save you. Thank you, Robin, for everything that you've done. You saved my life. And I will always be grateful for that. All I'm saying is that sometimes friends need to take a stand. And if I hadn't found Patrick Drake, then, you know, you wouldn't be here. I understand that you made the only choice you could, both now and in the past. I just, I just don't, I don't feel the same way. All right. At least we've both said our piece. I just wish. One. I just wish that you could see the way Carly uses you and twists you all around. And you let her get away with it for some reason. I, I'll never understand it. Maybe it's time to let go of that. For Sam's sake. I work several nights a week, but there's a French bistro on Main that's really charming and romantic. Well, that sounds perfect for the two of us. How's your schedule next week? <clears throat> Do you think you could manage to stop flirting long enough to give me my MRI notes now, back? Don't tell me you're jealous. Okay, I won't. I would stop flirting if your Stalin-like charm hadn't driven me to seek company elsewhere. Do these lines actually work on some women? I don't know. I haven't tried that one yet. You bring out the best of me, Robin. Hmm, I was under the impression that every woman in this hospital brought out the best in me. Well, all the pretty ones, which would include you if you'd smile. You know, you smile, right, where the corner of your mouth turns up? <clears throat> yeah, I meant what Well, there's passion underneath your glacial exterior. Do you work at being this annoying? Well, you must enjoy it. Why else would you keep popping up everywhere else I am? Oh, well, let's see. Maybe because we work in the same hospital. OK, I'll make the first move. How about dinner Saturday night? <laughs> in your dreams. Sunday, then. You really are unbelievable. That's what they all say. Wow. Can you please give me my notes back? OK, listen. I know you like to take your time with big decisions, and I respect that. But you might have more fun with me than you think. I'm a great conversationalist. I have a lot of interests. I'm educated. I enjoy culture. Good for you. 
If you keep pushing me away, I'll move on. Would you? Please. I know you'd rather bite your tongue in two than admit it. But if I do, you'll be sorry. General Hospital, fourth floor nurse's desk. Let me see if he's available. It's Mrs. Corinthos for you. Carly, a pleasant surprise. I'm glad you think so. Look, I really need your help, and you're the only one who can give it to me. Do you think you could come over right away? Well, I had a dinner date, but I could be persuaded to cancel if this is a true emergency. It is, and I really can't describe it to you over the phone. You'll just have to come and see. It can't wait till tomorrow. No, it can't. I really need you tonight. What's your address? 607 Braidwood Trace. Will you please hurry? I'll be right over. Dr. Jones, 503. Dr. Tony Jones. Call Dr. Lee and cancel my dinner for tonight. Emergent house call. I'll bet. So where is Dr. Drake going in such a hurry? A, uh, house call to Carly Corinthos. Hi. I wasn't sure what you were into, so I brought it all, from tongue to presses to menthol rub. Great. You're going to need it. For Michael. Michael. Yes, he's my son. He fell through the ice into the pond, and now he's having tingling sensation in his arm, nightmares. I'm sure he's okay. But I'd really like for you to check him out. Doesn't Michael have a pediatrician? Yes, he does. Dr. O'Donnell, but I really didn't want to call him. Why all the secrecy? I just spent a few months in Roselawn. Yes, I'm better, but I'm afraid some people may misinterpret Michael's accident. You said he fell through the ice. After sneaking out of his bedroom window without my permission. He knows what he did was wrong. I just don't want anyone to think I'm a negligent mother. Your own mother's a nurse. You could have I called her. I cannot call Bobby at the hospital. Someone might find out, namely that self-righteous witch, Robin Scorpio. She'll probably call Children's Services and try and have Michael taken away from me. Look, if there is something wrong with him, I will take him to the hospital. Could you please go check him out? Lead the way. Pupils equal and dilated. Let's see. His pulse is normal. You're the doctor who operated on my Uncle Jason, aren't you? saved his life. But you're real modest about it, right? Well, what's the point of being modest? The best neurosurgeon in the Northeast. Your uncle was lucky I was available. Can we turn the spotlight off of you and put it on to my son for, oh, five minutes, please? He'll be fine. He's good to go. What about the tingling in his arm? It's probably nothing. His arm fell asleep. See, Mom, I told you. So, must have been pretty scary falling in the pond. Well, yeah, but... It mainly was just really, really cold. It's like turning into an ice cube. Mom said you had a nightmare? Yeah, but I'm fine now. Okay. You're a brave boy. He's in good shape. He'll be fine. Thanks. You're welcome. Thanks for coming by. No problem. Excuse me. Tip for the future. You gotta stay off of thin ice. Can't tell when it's gonna crack. Who told you where I live? Bobby. Wow, you would think my mom would know you were the last person I'd ever want to visit from. Well, Carly, it is a new year, and since I'm going to be in Port Charles for the conceivable future, I thought there was a couple of things we could talk about. Why don't you go back to Paris? I'm sure there are plenty of French people that are in desperate need of your wisdom and your guidance. Fly back there and run their life. I'm not trying to run anyone's life, Carly. I just... I would like to find a way for us to peacefully coexist. You would like to declare a truce now? And it's all of a sudden so important to you that you had to come all the way out here and ring my doorbell? I don't buy that. Hurry up and say what you want, because I'm pretty busy. Oh. I get it. So you two are... Uh, yeah. Mm. Damn straight we are.